here's the kicker. Graham, Mika, thanks so much for joining us here on Voices in Transformation. Now, I'm going to start with you, Graham. What does customer operations mean for Unilever today? So firstly, the objective of uh, customer operations is to enhance the customer experience. So it's a relatively new department. We started it about two and a half years ago. And since its inception, we've uh, delivered around 1.7 billion euros of value for the company. So that's, that's in three areas. The first area is enhanced service to our customers. So being there on the shelf when the consumer's there to buy our products. The second one is uh, reduced inventories. So reducing the cash flow across the chain. And the last one is around improved efficiencies, particularly in the logistics area, which is an area of our focus. So customer operations is also, it's, it's three core areas of supply chain. One is really end-to-end -end planning from forecasting all the way through to execution planning, so transport planning. Um, it's uh, around logistics, so everything related to warehouses, primary, secondary transport, and, and customer service, which is uh, the traditional customer service facing the customer, but also order entry, claims management, sometimes going into the finance uh, area, sometimes cash collection, well, including cash collection. But it also includes some activities from traditional sales parts of the business, so promo management, promo forecasting activities. So we've grouped all of those into an area we call customer operations. And as I said, we've driven 1.7 uh, billion euros of value. Now, we, the way we also support that is we've created a tech framework, which is an end-to-end -end tech framework. That's with partners like Connexus, Salesforce, Oracle, uh, Era Technologies, Pegasystems, and I could go on and on, but I won't. Um, and this is really the end-to-end -end technology framework. Uh, on top of that, we also work together with seven hubs uh, around the world. So this is a global function. Um, and those hubs are together with our partners, Capgemini and Genpact, where they really support us in standardizing processes and, uh, and running some of our processes, so particularly the transaction life processes in, in some of those hubs. Mika, what is this actually meant for the customer experience? So what we are doing is how we are connecting all the different areas of customer uh, operations, planning, supply chain, manufacturing, IT, all together to be able to build solutions for our customers. One of these solutions is the one that we created, Sky 1.0. Sky 1.0 is how we are connecting with our customers. So why we create that solution? First of all, our service at the point of sites was low, was less than 90%. That means that when our consumers are going to the, to the shop, they were not able to get our products on the right time, on the right moment. Second, our, our uh, reputation to our customers was, uh, was low. Only 40% of our markets were ranked in the top three through AGS, which is the survey that we are using in the, in the FNCG um, industry. And last but not least, our inventory across all the network in our warehouse, but also in the customer warehouse was really high. We have more than 40%, 40 days of inventory in the total network. So we have data from our customers. We have information from our customers, but we were not using that data in order to create value for our customers and for us. So what we did was to create a, a, an environment where we start using that data from the customer, the, the POS data, the inventory, the promotions. Through AI, we generate a, a sellout forecast at the SKU store day level for our top key customers. With that forecast, we start using the same demand signal for our customers. So our customers start using this number, but also we start using the same number to ingest in our system and start producing with that number. So we start buying materials with the same agreement that we did with our customers, start producing the lines, start doing the whole replenishment. And the same the customers. The customers start planning using the same number. So that allow us to create one demand signal for us with our customers and be able to create more understanding on what's going on for our consumers on the shelf. 
That means that we can understand if a promotion is running good or bad and be able to respond in a more agile way in order to be able to start producing that product before getting the order from our customers. So it's helping a lot in terms of connectivity. This um, program started in Walmart, Mexico. It's already live since 2022. And then during 2023, we did a huge uh, rollout across the globe. So right now we are live in 10 customers in UK, in Mexico, and also in Netherlands with different suppliers, top suppliers for us. And we are continue doing the expansion across the globe during 2025 also. And, and Graham, what's next for uh, customer operations? Yeah, so I, basically we want to generate the same level of value again over the next couple of years. So 1.7 billion of value. The first area is what uh, Michele was, was describing there very, very well. So it's around demand creation. So understanding what is our service level at the point of sale. So where the shopper goes into the store, where they buy it or online, or if it's a distributed trade at the end state, the product needs to be there. We need to measure that electronically. We need to make sure that's aligned with our customers. So we don't have a different view. And we need to use that data to run a much stronger synchronized fulfillment to, to fulfill that demand even better. You can imagine on top of that, there's even more insights uh, that you could get as you start to share data with customers. Uh, the second block is around enterprise excellence. So I spoke about this end-to-end -end IOP setup that we have. It's around mm -hmm. how, we, how we continue to tune that model and driving towards what we're calling perfect autonomous operations. Now, in order to get there, of course, you need a different skill set of, of, of people. And that is what we call the, the third block, which is around DigiOps people. It's not different people. It's, it's our people who are learning and building the skills, particularly in tech. So when I talk tech, I mean IT, infrastructure, data and analytics, as well as, as how, we, uh, how we then run our business, so business pro processes. And then those are DigiOps people. And then you get the best of those worlds. So you're creating demand for this brilliant fulfillment that uh, Mika was talking about. Uh, you, uh, you have a, an aut autonomous operating model that is fast and slick and efficient, serving customers better. And you have people who are able to understand that and continuously improve that model. Graham, last question. Everyone keeps talking about agentic AI, or I guess that's what we're going to be talking about this year, I think. So can you tell us a little bit more about, uh, you know, how you're embracing agentic AI? Yeah, so there really are uh, agentic AI agents in our team. So let me introduce you to two of them. So we have one, we call him Uli. Uh, he is uh, the customer experience boss. And what Uli is able to do, he, he accesses all of that IOPS uh, data that I was speaking about earlier. He's able to scrape that data. We looked at what are the most common queries from our customers, and he will scrape that data. Uh, and based on that information, uh, we'll, we'll create an answer back to our customer, which is much more fact-based, much quicker um, than, than a human is able to be able to do that themselves. So, so that's Uli. Um, the second one is our digital materials planner. So if Uli is a he, she will be a she. Uh, and our digital materials planner is, is really able to look at all of our systems. So our planning system, which is production, our production planning system, our SAP materials uh, replenishment system, our order management system, and is able to look at all three of those and make choices to see, ah, this material is coming in late, therefore I need to basically change the production plan. Or there's an increased demand, and therefore I need to uh, order my materials earlier. And that is done in a very concurrent, live way uh, by our digital materials planner. So they're both part of our team, um, and, uh, and we have a few others. And of course, we, we certainly will have a few more into the future. And the exciting part is that the winner is the customer at the end of the day, isn't it? Yes. So that is, as I mentioned in the very first line, the overall objective of what we do is really trying to improve our customer experience. Gwen, Mika, thanks so much for being here on Voices in Transformation. I look forward to, you know, maybe meeting some of your agents. Thanks so much.